In Formula One, only 20 drivers can get into the sport, and it's pretty difficult to keep a position. That's why when bad drivers make it to the top, it is so unusual. Here, we count down some of the worst drivers to ever compete in F1. Which drivers started racing at the age of 38? And which drivers set the record for most number of times lapped? Stay tuned to find out all that and more. First, we have Yuji Ide. Yuji had a pretty decent road to Formula One. He was successful in karting and junior racing, winning the Formula Dream Series and coming seventh place in the French Formula 3 championship. But his career took a while to get off the ground. By the time he had made it to Formula 1, he was 31 years old. Not exactly a spring chicken. But nothing would stop Yuji from achieving his dream, and in 2006 he was signed with F1 team Super Aguri next to teammate Takamato Sato from an all-Japanese team. Yuji's seasons didn't start off well. He failed to finish the Bahrain Grand Prix, and then at the Australian Grand Prix was blamed for blocking Rubens Barrichello during qualifying. At the race, he spun off the track several times, which led people to wonder whether he was really cut out for F1 driving. And things only got worse. At the Italian Grand Prix in Imola, EJ was involved in a first lap incident with Christian Albers. EJ was clearly to blame, and Albers was lucky to walk away relatively unharmed after his car flipped several times. His FIA super license was shortly after revoked, meaning that he wasn't eligible to compete in F1. Yuji often appears on lists of the worst drivers to ever compete in F1, but he lacked a lot of the experience normally given to rookie drivers. Super Aguri team principal said that Yuji faced a language barrier because of his limited English and didn't have much time to practice with a Formula One car. No practice and thrown into the highest motorsport in the world? Okay, maybe we were a little harsh on him. Up next, Ricardo Rosset. Have you ever tried a three-point turn and got stuck somewhere? Well, just be thankful that it wasn't broadcast around the world. For this next driver, he wasn't so lucky. Ricardo Rosset is a driver who comes from a country famous for F1 drivers. Brazil. Rosset started in the Formula 1 Opel Euro Series before competing in the British Formula 3 Championship and coming 6th. He then moved up Formula 3000 and performed well, finishing in 2nd. Then, in 1996 he was signed to the British F1 team Footwork before moving to Mastercard Lola in 1997 and then on to Tyrell in 1998, which is where he really made a name for himself, but not in a good way. He failed to qualify many times and his highest place finish was 8th. The 1998 Monaco Monaco Grand Prix was probably his most embarrassing outing though. Before the race had even began, he crashed into world champion Jacques Villeneuve during a practice session. Then again on the same weekend, he spun his car at the end of qualifying and got his car stuck when he tried to spin it back onto the track. The reason for Rosset's entry into Formula 1 is now a familiar one. He brought a significant amount of sponsorship money with him. Like Lance Stroll, Nikita Mazepin, or Nicholas Latifi, he bought his way into the sport, but he wasn't talented enough to stay. Now we have Jean Denis Delatrez. This guy had only three entries into Formula One, but they were all memorable performances, and not memorable for any good reason. He had a mixture of success in his road to F1, and can you guess how he got a seat with an F1 team? That's right, money. The LaRousse Formula One team was strapped for cash in 1994 and had two drivers who were bringing badly needed sponsorship money to the team. At the last round of 1994 in Australia, Jean Denis Delatrez was allowed to drive with the team in exchange for more sponsorship. He qualified in second last position and then during the race was lapped a phenomenal 10 times. He was crawling along the track 6 seconds slower than the leaders. With that kind of pace you might as well drive the car into the pits and save the engine. Sure, us fans probably couldn't do any better, but we have no right to race in F1 either. Shockingly, it wouldn't be Delatrez's last race. His next outing was with Pacific Team Lotus in 1995 and after qualifying last, he was soon again being lapped by everyone on the grid. Somehow he was even slower than his first race. He was driving 12 seconds slower than the race leaders this time. Luckily for the other drivers on the track, he decided to retire the race after just 14 laps, complaining of a cramp in his arm. In his third and final appearance, Delatraz qualified last and finished 7 laps behind the race winner. This would be the end of one of the shortest careers in F1 history, but one of the longest times on the track. How did one driver make it into Formula 1 at the age of 42? And which driver only got a seat with $50 million? All that is coming right up, so don't go anywhere. Up next, Alpes. What is the worst record to have in a racing sport? Coming in with even fewer stars than Della Traz is Alpes, who raced in only two Formula One races and holds one of the most embarrassing records in the sport's history. The British Canadian racing fanatic Alpes somehow made his way to the top of the motorsport in the 1960s to compete in Formula One. He had entered a privately owned Eagle Westlake, which 
which at the time was enough to guarantee a place on the starting grid. His first race was at the 1967 Canadian Grand Prix, and he made Delatraz look like Lewis Hamilton. Alpes was lapped a whopping 43 times by the race leader, and the race only went for 90 laps. In his second race entry, he didn't get a chance to race because of engine trouble with his car before the race, but his third entry was what makes him a truly memorable name in the history of Formula One. Two years later, at the same Grand Prix that he debuted his career, Alpes became the first and only Formula One driver to be disqualified in a race for driving too slow. After being involved in many collisions and race incidents, the steward said enough is enough. On lap 22, Al Jean was disqualified for traveling at excessively slow speeds and endangering other drivers. Totally undeterred, Alpes actually continued his racing career and was inducted into the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame. If this baffles you too, then welcome to the club. Now we have Pastora Maldonado. The next driver is probably the most successful on our list, which is truly bizarre. He has 76 career points to his name, a race win, and a pole position. So how could he be one of the worst of all time? Introducing Venezuelan Pastor Maldonado. For those unfamiliar, Maldonado has cemented his place in Formula One as a meme. Once again, Maldonado is a driver who brought with him a great deal of sponsorship money. He was backed by the state-owned Venezuelan oil company PDVSA, which helped him secure a seat at Williams & Lotus. It was estimated that the company paid around $50 million to secure his position. He competed quite well in lower series, winning GP2 over future F1 drivers in 2010. He became famous for his lack of consistency and dangerous driving. Sometimes it felt like he wasn't thinking about what he was doing at all. He was called mental by former world champion Jensen Button, and a report showed that between 2011 and 2015, Maldonado had received double the amount of penalties than any other driver. There are YouTube compilations of his crashes, articles about his legacy of crashes, and even top 10 lists of Pastor Maldonado crashes. So there is plenty of material to go off. His nickname became Crash Tour, and there was even a website set up for if Maldonado had crashed today. What you can't say is that it was ever boring to have Maldonado on the track. There could be an incident at any time. But at the end of the day, we'd probably all choose higher quality racing over accidents. Lastly, Chanek Nisani. If you think it's too late to start racing and make it to F1, then boy have we got an inspirational story for you. Most people buy a new car after having a midlife crisis, but some decide to go further and become racing drivers. Chanak Nisani started racing at the ripe old age of 38 at the 2002 Formula 2000 Hungarian National Championship. He had some success, even winning a few titles on his way up to Formula 1, only three years into his career, and he was announced as the official test driver for the Minardi Formula 1 team. At the 2005 Hungarian Grand Prix and on his 42nd birthday, Nisani drove a Minardi in the first practice session of the weekend. How did he go? Well, his pace was more than 12 seconds slower than the fastest car. He complained about the car having too much grip, surely a first in F1, before spinning off the track. Then, he couldn't figure out how to remove the steering wheel, and so had to remain in the car as it was towed away with a crane. Oh, did we mention that Nasani is a wealthy businessman? Or that his personal sponsor, Upex, sponsored Minardi for the Hungarian Grand Prix? Yeah, it's all starting to make a little more sense now, isn't it? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.